Barely a week after the terrorist organization Boko Haram killed six people in an attack carried out on Christmas Eve in Borno State, the Nigerian government, as represented by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has insisted that the President Muhammad Buhari led administration is winning the war against insurgents and insecurity. Still with me in the studio is legal practitioner Tunji Abdulhamid. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you for having me. This conversation is not a new one. We've had the government talk about, at some point it was technically defeated. At another point it was, um, they are now targeting Decimated. soft, yes, soft targets at the, in the fringes of the uh, late Chad. And now we have this. Let's start with terrorism. The general issue is insecurity, but let's start with terrorism. Do you agree that the terrorists do not occupy any territory in this country as at present? Yeah, I do. I don't want to agree in that, uh, to that uh, uh, conversation. Because I, recently I listened to some people who made comments about it. People who live in those areas. And they, they talk about uh, Boko Haram still occupying a certain area. How true that statement is, I wouldn't know. But I don't want to believe, as it today now, that uh, Boko Haram is not occupying any, any territory. They may not be making any, they may not be occupying so much uh, territory. I'm not sure whether they are, they are not occupying anything. I, I, can't, I can't say that is totally correct. Are they winning the war against insurgency? Yeah, at least, look, compared, relatively, relatively, we are making progress. Relatively. Because before now, we hear of an uh, attack all the time, and we hear of uh, people being killed, kidnapped, and all, all the time. But recently, maybe before, before the 2019 election, it was rampant, except until recently, a few weeks ago, when we had another uh, attack. Okay. Been, been no, no, just hold on to that thought. We'll come back to you in a bit. Um, I'm just, I've just been told that we have on the phone with us a uh, security analyst. Uh, his name is Dennis Amakri. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, pleasure to have you join us. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, the conversation about insecurity in this country, the Minister of Information says, insists rather, that the federal government is winning the war against insecurity. What is your perspective on that statement? Well, I think um, they, they are trying to um, manage the situation. And uh, for this year now, most of the um, uh, attacks have been restricted to the northeast, so uh, we don't have all those sporadic attacks uh, in Abuja and uh, other places. I think the banditry has been brought to a certain level. So I think um, yes, I would say they are winning uh, the fight. Okay, in the situation in Bornu State, there are analysts that say that until the situation there is completely arrested, the, the fight against the insurgency cannot be said to have been won. As of October, a representative there um, at the House of Representatives said that um, his community had about 20 attacks in Bornu State, in 20 different attacks. What do you make of that? Uh, do you share the same position with other analysts? Yeah, um, because uh, there is sporadic attack. Uh, you have um, the one in Magali and then, uh, of course, in um, Adamawa. And of course, um, the Nigerian soldiers have also hit back on them, uh, rest of them. And, um, you know, this is a war. It is not one that uh, is a one way thing. So um, I think our soldiers are doing very well. Uh, we have to encourage them and we have to support them. Okay, away from the rhetorics now, uh, banditry, um, armed robbery, kidnapping, it's other forms of insecurity that we face in this country. And he says um, it has reduced to the barest minimum. Is it receding, in uh, your opinion? Uh, I think uh, they have to do more about it. Uh, I am very happy with the new uh, presidential directive that uh, the military should be restricted to um, fighting uh, the territorial integrity, fighting for the territorial integrity of Nigeria. 
and then of course leaving internal security to the police, NSDC, and then the military. So uh, we believe that uh, with this uh, division of labor, there will be more uh, concentration in dealing uh, the internal problems of kidnapping, banditry, robbery, and stuff like that. Uh, but I have to advise at this time that um, they have to actually equip the police and then, uh, of course, uh, do a lot of training for them. Do you see the government um, having the will to do this in the remaining time that they have? I mean, equip the police. Hello? I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Hello? I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Okay, I'm asking, do you see this government uh, doing something to truly upgrade the Nigerian police? I didn't get you. Okay, I guess... Okay, I'll just have to thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right. Um, that was uh, security analyst Dennis Amakri sharing his thought on the security uh, situation in this country. Um, what's your take on his response first before we continue the conversation? No, his response was in line with what I said earlier on, that we're making progress, that the attack uh, wasn't like a, as, it, as, as it was before. The Boko Haram or the other people who are creating crisis. Maybe they are, they, are being, they are getting tired or maybe they are trying to resuscitate guys. But I am not uh, comfortable with the directive that the military should go back to the, that they are withdrawing a military from certain area. I'm not comfortable in the sense that uh, I am not, I'm not so confident that our, our police have the capacity to fight this uh, war, uh, uh, yeah, insurgency. To war. insurgency, yeah. I, I'm not sure they have the capacity to do that. I, I am not too sure. So and I, I'm worried. I, I think they should, like they say, well, I, know, I am aware that they say it will be gradual. The area they believe uh, is safe. They will withdraw them for that. But I don't, I don't know the reason. I'm not a security expert. I don't know why the, reason, the reason why they should announce that one openly. Why, why don't they do it within themselves? Without, without, that's why they will be withdrawing them gradually from the place. I will not know. Why must, he, why must they announce it to everybody to know? It's yeah. not, it's not, it's not anti-strategy. That, that brings because, me and, to and, and again, you know, I, I just hope that this pronouncement will not uh, make those people to come and uh, do that, anything. That was exactly the question I was going to ask you. Was that press conference given yesterday really necessary, um, considering the fact that we are having that conversation now, others are listening, even the same insurgency um, uh, people, they are listening. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking it's unnecessary as far as I'm concerned. Although I'm not a security expert, but I think reasonably you don't discuss that kind of thing openly when you are, you are that, you know, I see that as a strategy. And we are discussing our strategy with them. But when they realize that, okay, we are moving our, we have withdrawn our soldiers from certain area, they may go there and say, okay, they are now weakening now. Let's go there and attack them. Maybe they are somewhere relaxing and thinking, because of this uh, soldier that are there, they will not be able to do anything. Now that we are, we are announcing to them that we are withdrawing our soldiers from those areas, if they now come back to that area, what will happen? We, have, we don't have to be, uh, we, we must be proactive and not respond to, to action. Yes, I'm aware the job of the army is not to, is not to fight uh, internal uh, insurgents. They are to do external aggression, to, to, to way of uh, external aggression. But in the circumstances where we find ourselves, the police have not been trained enough to do this. They've been, they've been for, they, they have for over a period of years been relegated to the background regarding them. There are some of them who are very, very, very hardworking and very, very intelligent. I, 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 I can vouch for our, our hardworking uh, IRT IR, IR, uh, uh, commander, uh, Abba, Abba Kiari. He's been doing a lot regarding the fight against uh, uh, kidnapping and other insurgencies. There, there, there are so many of them like that. There are, there are a few of them like that. But generally, I'm not sure we have the capacity. In fact, I'm not even sure we have the number or the personnel that can handle those situations. Because most of these, most of these police, majority of them are even with the politicians. You, 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 you get my point. We don't have enough, the, uh, we don't have the enough, uh, enough uh, personnel. We don't have enough uh, or adequate uh, uh, facility to withstand this fight. So my worry is that I'm not sure we have the, the police, we have the capacity to handle this uh, insurgency without the having support. Yeah. Just recently, or a few weeks ago, there was, a, there was an Abraba alarm at, in Abu, at the bank in Abuja. Abuja. They could not, it was when the military came that the issue was able to, they were able to resolve the issue. That is so that's just a small would issue. would you say the Nigerian police about, is sort of being relegated somehow? We've, we've relegated them to the background. And them, them themselves did not even, they also, they've also relegated themselves to, to, to the background. And I'll not blame them. They were not adequately, adequately taken care of. There is no proper welfare given to them. 
there is no proper uh, training given to them. There is no, if, have you, if you've been to the to Kedja there, where they, they, they have their training school there, you, you'll, be, you'll be amazed that people who are supposed to be our uh, officers and, and to protect us are the ones staying here. You know, that, that, so I won't blame them. They are also women like us, and they, it's not their fault. They need adequate training. They need proper welfare. They need, they need a, lot, a lot of uh, adequate uh, 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 facility to be able to, to, to fight the, 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 the insurgency. insurgency. There, there, because, they are, because I'm aware they have more uh, sophisticated weapons than our, our uh, officers. Okay, uh, there, there's something um, with the presentation by the minister. Most times people tend to, you know, uh, find faults with everything that he said. But you seem to be agreeing to a certain degree that this administration has worked to, you know, bring down the level of insecurity um, in the country. Well, my question actually is, the, the total package of that press conference, is it a fair representation? Because this is the last day of 2019. Is it a fair representation of government serving the people in 2019? Yeah, I think the, 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 the press conference was, was just an attempt by the uh, minister to brief the country or to give a scorecard of uh, the, 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 this administration. And in that regard, they are trying to tell us what and what they've done and what, and what they want to do. Uh, but I, like I said, uh, I agree with some of the things they said and I disagree with the majority of the things they said. So the, the, regarding this uh, military issue that was at the withdrawal of this uh, military from the uh, from the from starting soon, you can you can even see that some of the governors were even saying, "Don't don't withdraw them. We still need them here." The the, the governor they must know more than us. They know what is happening. That's, that they are the, they are the, they are the, they are the what's it called chief uh, security officer of the state, and they know what and what is going on in their state. I am I am, I am worried. I'm not confident that uh, what's it called the the police will be able to handle those uh, issues. The the government should be to do more of uh, giving us reports, giving us accountability. But it's not, I'm not, it's not for them to come and score themselves. They, are, uh, so they just give us what they have done. It is for us to score them, not for them to score themselves. Okay, I was going to put this question to um, uh, Mr. Amakri earlier, but the line went bad. So I'll put it to you and just ask. Um, the minister made a distinction uh, between Boko Haram and Iswab. Iswab is an a splinter group of the Boko Haram. Some are saying that the line between these two groups are blurry. Others think uh, the groups are fighting uh, for relevance, basically. Uh, what do you say? Uh, do we really have two groups? Or we're, this is what we're being told? Well, we have to agree with what we have been told. I have not been to the... But oftentimes, we don't agree with the military, most times. Because they're saying these two groups, I mean, we're fighting insurgency. Can't we leave it at that? How Must they, we how, identify how they know, two groups? How they know whether we have Israel, whether we have Boko Haram, how they know that this is a Boko Haram or Israel? I don't know. I don't know whether they discuss with them or not. You know, like, well, maybe there is, a, there is a discussion going on with them or whether they, 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 they do interact with them. That's how they become aware of whether there's one is Israel or one is a, a Boko Haram. So there are, anyway, so there are some people, even there are some Nigerians who, who have a relationship with uh, these Boko Haram people. I'm aware that at the time there's a woman called uh, Mama, Mama Boko Haram. Yeah, it's nobody's hearing that much from that she's, been, she's facing a certain, uh, I think she's, been, she's facing some uh, uh, trial or something on a certain uh, allegation of a uh, contract fraud or something. I'm not too clear about that. That's why I say in quotes. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard I read, it. I read well. that yeah. in some way. I'm not, I, I was not able to confirm it. So we still are, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm surprised that uh, they, so there are some people who know them. There are, there are people who relate with them. And there are some people who negotiate with them as, as well. Because we hear that, we heard that some people uh, 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 corner the, the amount, the amount, certain money that was meant to sell to certain people. Uh, that was a long time ago. So definitely they were known by people, and those people who know them, be able to know the, whether this is a, this or, the, or this is that. Because I, I, I remember when the, was in the last set of uh, kidnap done by them, they would, Mama Bukaram said, ah, it was a clinical set. He mentioned the name of that uh, guy, that don't worry, the, that one is not uh, too bad. You will, you will do, uh, you, she will talk to them or something like that. So definitely there are people who, know who, who they are, and then definitely they will know whether this is this or this is that. So I want to agree with them that uh, they have a decision. Okay, know between, them well. okay, before I let you go, I, I must ask you this. The vehemence, the insistence, the repetitiveness, uh, repetitiveness of the um, comments about, you know, decimating, decimating uh, the insurgency, um, would it be your opinion that there could be a different strategy 
or are you happy with the way that the government has handled passing on information about the fight against insurgency in the year 2019? I'm not too comfortable with government uh, making uh, comments regarding uh, what they have, what, let, we, should have, we should be able to see what they have done, not about technology. They, because I, I'm, I'm worried that when, whenever they come out and say they've been disseminated, they've been technically defeated, that's, that's the week or week after that you will hear attack somewhere. I just hope so this will not happen. And I because they want to, they also want to put that look, we are still in existence. I don't want to, I, don't, I, I want to believe that the government is saying the right thing. And they, they should, but I, I want the government to talk less. When, talk, when it comes to security, they say you don't, you don't talk security everywhere. So I believe they should not be saying all this into us. I, I'm not even worried that uh, they were telling us they want to withdraw from certain area. We should not, we should not know that. They should not, they should not tell us that. I, that's my own thinking. They should, it should be within their own internal arrangement and know how to hand over to police and then we, we won't know what, what has happened. We we'll just realize that maybe we we'll just realize that soldiers are no longer within them and then that, that would be all. So it's not for them to announce to the whole world that we are withdrawing from a, a particular uh, uh, war zone. The enemy, are you inviting the enemy to come and take over the place or what? Interesting position. Thank you very much thank for your you thoughts on the program today. And thank you for being a part of Plus Politics for the year 2019. Thank you very much. It's, it's my a pleasure, pleasure to, to have you. I always want to be there. Please. I will see you. I'll see you in 2020. Like that, Grace. <laughs> All right. It's time for us uh, to take a break for our Plus Report. And when we return, I will be given my take. Just stay with us. As the year winds up, there is a need to review the state of the nation in the last one year. To achieve this, Plus TV Africa had a conversation with former Archbishop of Abuja, Cardinal John Onayeko, who in an exclusive interview weighs on the issues of leadership and truthfulness in the exercise of leadership in Nigeria. If we are having problems in Nigeria today, it is, for me, it boils down to this, that we often see the truth, the right way to go. We don't go that way. We go another way, we cut corners, sharp corners, to try, and we think we are being clever. And at the end of the day, it doesn't work. Even if, on the short run, some people might profit from that kind of behavior, on the long run, the whole society suffers. And uh, uh, if we are sincere with ourselves, we would need very serious rethinking of our way of behavior and not thinking that whatever you can whatever whatever you can do to um, to uh, achieve what you think is your objective irrespective of whether it is right or wrong irrespective of whether you are oppressing somebody else and and infringing infringing on their rights or not then we will continue to fumble and fumble and fumble. And then we turn around and say, what is happening? Of course, you should know what is happening. You should know what is happening. Uh, and this has nothing to, this has nothing to do with religion. As you know, when it comes to religion, we are very religious in Nigeria. What we are talking about is uh, righteousness, honesty, uh, human solidarity, thinking living by the famous golden rule, do to others what exactly you want them to do to you. But if the rule is totally different, where you're just trying to, uh, to please yourself, take advantage of others, uh, climb to the top, doesn't matter how many people you are marching upon, and when you reach the top, you are not going to be comfortable, which is what is happening to us uh, today. Thirty-seven billion naira for renovation, three times the original amount spent in erecting the structure. I would say we just take it down and build something out of this world for our legislators. And yes, I'm being sarcastic. If the lawsuit and social media outcry is anything to go by, many Nigerians do not understand this humongous amount. It makes no sense and means nothing in the current scheme of public infrastructure deficit in key areas like health and education. Millions of youths are unemployed. Some, with creative ideas, lack the needed financial backing to become much-needed employers of labor. And we have this? No, no. Government must set its priorities aright. Dear government, 
Please be reminded that since June 2018, when the World Poverty Clock named Nigeria the poverty capital of the world, four million Nigerians since then, 2018, have joined the Poverty Club in 2019. Pause, please. Focus only on the people. Thank you very much for watching the last episode of the program for the year 2019. It returns same time in 2020. I wish you a very happy new year. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Thanks again for watching.